Um, candidates, stay put because we're now handing over to Patricia Mountain, South East Regional Organiser, who's going to continue the proceedings. Right. Thank you very much, Mike, and you did an absolute superb job. Patricia, we owe you a huge debt of thanks. Now, one of the things that um, we uh, uh, did since last Thursday, we were having 10 phone calls a day to each other. And on Wednesday, I think it was probably on phone call number 10, Patricia said to me, God, she said, I've worked hard for this breakdown. I am now going to have my nervous breakdown. And so, Patricia, on behalf of all of us, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Patricia. So, thank you. And don't have your nervous breakdown next week. We need you to carry on the good work. Well, good afternoon, delegates, and good afternoon, friends. I call you friends because if you are sitting in this room today, after all the shenanigans earlier this week, you must truly be friends. Can you recall the reason why you joined UKIP in the very first place? Or to use modern terminology, what was it that triggered you? I guarantee that whatever that problem, concern or issue was, it is not resolved. It will not have been resolved because our government is too weak. Our government is not brave enough, not brave enough to tackle the many problems facing our British citizens. Let me share with you why I joined the party. I had just sold my business, getting used to watching daytime television, which was really something quite new to me, I sat there this afternoon, cuppa in one hand, remote control in the other. Suddenly, a news flash. A British serving soldier beheaded on the streets of London in broad daylight and near a school. Yes, you've got it, guys. Drummer Lee Rigby. I cannot tell you the shock and horror I experienced that afternoon. A blatant, horrendous murder on our streets. I remember thinking, what on earth are our politicians doing? Why is this happening? No one is safe on our streets. I decided there and then that I would join a political party. But the question was, which one? I looked at the Tories. Well, not, not for me. I looked at the Labour Party. I was a Labour Party activist in my youth, but the least said about that, the better. Then, as I live in Brighton, I thought I'd better give uh, the Greens a gander. <laughs> but then I remembered the massive cock-ups they made when they were running the city. So I gave them a wide berth. Then I discovered the UK Independence Party. I read their manifesto, <laughs> policy pledges, and agreed with every word that I read. I joined the party, and the rest is history. I was lucky. My local branch was strong and active. I was contacted by the branch chairman very quickly. They extended the hand of friendship, friendships that have lasted the test of time. I was a complete novice. I had no idea what a branch was and hardly understood what a constituency was, but they very quickly educated me in all things political. Now, for UKIP to get back on an even keel, we must resurrect the defunct branches. 
If your chairman has waltzed off to the Brexit party, or if your treasurer has fallen out with the membership secretary, you, together with one other member, can restore the branch. Just two people, a chairman and a treasurer, can be the branch. You will then be notified of all new members and you can then welcome them and give them the benefit of your experience, encourage them to be active within your new branch. And this is how UKIP can regroup. And re regroup, we must. UKIP is needed. And I say, jog on the Brexit party and Nigel Farage. UKIP is brave, and if given the chance to govern, every British citizen would feel safer. Every British citizen would be treated more fairly, and every British citizen would sleep easy in their bed because UKIP would make sure that every British citizen had one. But let's go back to the reason I joined the party. We are not safe on the streets. We most certainly are not safe on our streets. I have friends who will not go out after dark, others who are nervous about getting in their cars if they've had to park in a remote spot. They fear that someone could jump out of the shadows. People are nervous to make eye contact with passers-by, and how sad is that? But I'm not surprised at this. MI5 have identified 125,000 undesirables. 125 undesirables roaming our streets unmonitored. Who are they and why are they here? I don't do identity politics. I don't give a damn about color, religion or gender. If you are a British citizen, you abide by British law, one law for all. <laughs> now, thank you. Now, how can UKIP get this message over without being accused of being racist? We're all used to being called racist, but how can we even start to get our message over? And this is how I would like to start. In this country, the law says a man can only have one wife, otherwise he is a bigamist. <laughs> he can't have four wives, Freddie. So, uh, so let's start with that one. Let's stick up for women. I don't believe in feminism and all that nonsense, but please... Let's start standing up for those women who have become the underclass. I could talk at length on this subject, but I don't have the time today. I, actually, I don't think I've got much time left, so I better press on, because I want to thank the conference team, each and every one of them. Their names are in the programme. They have worked with me over the last few months to make this conference success, a, success, a, a success. And they are still working now to make everything run smoothly right to the end. I want to make a special mention of the YI guys, those people at the back, those wonderful people at the back we could not have done today without your help and your experience and your expertise. So, Thank you, everyone, for showing our appreciation because they have been truly wonderful. And I'd like to uh, thank our speakers who have educated and entertained us today, giving up their time freely to promote and support UKIP. A special thanks to our friends from Italy. How interesting was that? Our party chairman, Kirsten, and our interim leader, Piers, thank you both for your support. And thank you, leadership candidates, for your participation in today's hustings. And thank you, UKIP, to Andrew Marr. Where's Andrew Marr? UKIP's Andrew Marr. Where is he? 
He's not here. But Mike Lennon did a wonderful, wonderful job, tremendous job today, and I think members will be better placed when they come to make that considered decision where to put their cross on the ballot paper. The success of UKIP will rest heavily on our new leader's shoulders. Now, I have a message for you, dear members. You are a member of UKIP because you believe in democracy. Our new leader is in this room. If the duly elected leader is not your preferred choice for the sake of democracy and the survival of UKIP, please get behind them and give them your support and give them a chance to succeed and achieve. I also have a message for our new leader, whoever that may be. Please, please respect your members. Be honest with them and maintain good communication. You have lots of hard work in front of you. Make it easy on yourselves. Build that team. Be inclusive and don't ignore your members. There is plenty of talent amongst the membership. Take full advice and advantage of that. And most of all, be as brave as Gerard Batten. We thank you, Gerard, for your bravery. Where are you, Gerard? Are you in the room? Where are you? Stand up, stand up, stand up. Thank you so much, Gerard. You have been so brave. And of course, you did save UKIP. So we continue the fight for a safer Britain.